who are given exempt, exemption from duty, the logbook would be stamped that is not for sale. And if you have to sell, you have to pay duty. I believe along the lines you are saying, we can work out something that can give some consideration to returning residents, uh, provided they are not going to sell. Again, it's, I cannot be able to give you a firm commitment. That is something that we need to discuss with the National Treasury at the cabinet level and see whether we can be able to make some, some decision along that line. Finally, I want to say that uh, the president, in his wisdom, created the State Department of Diaspora Affairs within the bigger Ministry of Foreign Affairs because of the, the strategic importance of the diaspora people. As it is today, the remittances, the remittances you said home is number one in, turn, in terms of foreign exchange earnings. You are head of tourism, you are head of coffee, you are head of tea. We are aware that all of you, and indeed all people in all countries, love home and plan someday to come back home, which you must. And you would want to invest back home. We are aware that most of you have been victims of being conned by relatives and friends, especially relatives. <laughs> Many people have sent money back home to their sisters, to their mothers, to their fathers, to buy them plots. And they take photographs of the neighbors and send to you. <laughs> Others, they say, you send the money to build for you a house, and they keep on sending you photographs at every stage. The foundation, the walling, the rental, the roofing, all the way. But it's a neighbor's house. <laughs> By the time you return, you are coming back home with your family, and you have bought furniture to fit in your four-bedroom house. You come back home to a shock. And there's nothing you can do. It's your mother, you can't take her to court. It's your brother, you cannot kill him. And then you are devastated. And you feel like you have lost it all. This State Department of Diaspora is meant to cure that one. A conversation, as the PR said, is going on on creating a diaspora bond. The government wants to create an investment forum guaranteed by government for the people in diaspora. How you can invest <laughs> back home in a safe manner and your savings are safe. We'll be mapping out credible real estate developers to work with the State Department of Diaspora Affairs that can build homes for people abroad and the government will guarantee so that your money is safe. So that there is a framework within government that once you get some real estate developers to develop you for you, the government will supervise and ensure that your investment is delivered. So that is going on. Again, I want to ask for your help. We need you to save at home. Other countries where we borrow money, they lend us money from savings from their countrymen. If you people agree with a good framework to save money at home. That is the money the government can borrow for development at an interest instead of going to China. We don't go to China because we like it. No. Anajua kikwetu wanasema buzi ya kupewa ya kupewa kama iko na meno. We go to China because there is nowhere else we can borrow money. If we can develop a saving culture for our people in the diaspora, 
because your money is huge. And that's what I want to appeal to you when the peers and our team works on that framework. Please come in. We have a responsible government and there is no responsible government that can let anybody lose your savings. Once we work on that framework and it is very clear and explained to you on how you can save your money back home and you are earning interest, please do so so that we can have a big reserve of our own money from the people of Kenya where the government can borrow at an interest for the development of your country. So we want your support. You are aware we had problems with the NSSF where they had created a law that you only save 200 shillings. 200 shillings even if you save for 30 years. I think it's 72,000. Because it's 2,400 per, per year. You know? And we had problems. That's why we were not agreeing with this fellow called Atoli. He was refusing. Then they were in power. But the minute we won, he came running to the president and said he has agreed. <laughs> so we have now only looked at it and people will be allowed to save up to 6% and the employer 6%, that is 12%. And that is good saving. So that as you grow in age, when you need help in old age, with the challenges of old age, you have a substantial saving. So alongside NSSF, we want to leverage on the saving from the diaspora. So once our people, the National Treasury and the State Department perfect that plan, please, we want to urge you to do it. And I invite you to save at home and develop something. Please, you must come back home someday. But not now. Right now, we have many problems. <laughs> you, you, you stay here a little bit. <laughs> so, but ultimately, ultimately, east or west, home is best. You people must buy land at home. You must build a nice house. You must start some investment back home. Because that is home and you need to develop your own country. And you know, at the end of it all, you will have to prepare for retirement. Many people don't like discussing retirement. They like running away from retirement. Just like our sisters like running away from age. And it's okay, there's no problem. We, even ourselves, we like them when they look younger. And they should stay younger. But unfortunately, it is not possible to remain young. So we must also prepare. We must prepare. So I want to thank your association. We have had good news how organized you are. Where you have challenges, you are able to pull together. You have a fund, you have a circle. That is the way to go. I want to urge you that since you are in a foreign country, the only way to stay well and safe is to be a brother's keeper. Love each other. Yeah? You know, have comradeship, have companionship. Because uh, it's only among yourselves. The other people, even if you're working for them, they really don't know you well. It's yourselves who know each other here. So have a very close-knit arrangement where you always stay together. Balozi has told me on Jamhuri Day, he invites you to the residence. You get together, go there, and that day talk Kiswahili, dance Kiswahili songs, and talk about your country and your motherland. And I'm telling you that once you do that, you'll be better people. Let me now appraise you on the station back home because it's my job to do so. Bele Ikosawa. Ikosawa. And uh, we had a very peaceful election. There was peace before election. There was peace during the election. There was peace after the election. And Kenyans moved on. Kenyans decided in a democratic manner 
how they'll be governed. And everybody moved on. Those who lost went to the Supreme Court and they had no case. And the government was formed and proceeded. Somewhere along the line, six months later, the people who lost decided that they had not lost. You see, they want something called a server to be opened. This server, we don't know where it is. <laughs> President William Ruto and I are not in custody. We don't have the custody of the server. The server is kept by IBC. And there was no server in the last election because there was something called the public portal. The results were uploaded as they were counted. And the whole world, the international community was present in Bombers, and everybody agreed that President William Ruto had won fair and square. Along the way, the opposition decided that uh, they want to start a little fight and go to the streets and demonstrate. And we said it's fine, it's part of a democracy. We thought it was that way. But reaching in the streets of Nairobi, it turned out to be different. It is destruction of property, looting of property, theft, and there was a lot of problem because people could not open businesses. And as a government, we said no. And we refused them to get to the CBD and other business areas. Along the way, they reached out to the president and said, it's not working. They want us to give them an exit strategy, which we agreed. And we told them to go to parliament and discuss. That discussion has started, but we said there can only be one discussion. One, we cannot discuss about the server because it's not within our purview. Number two, they were saying the Cherera 4 should be reinstated. There is no constitutional framework to reinstate them because they resigned on their own. They were saying they want to discuss cost of living, a good thing, only that they were not sincere. Because when they were in government through the handshake, the cost of Unga was 230, and they were not demonstrating then, and they were not making noise. The cost of Unga has gone down to 180, 170, as of this morning is 159. So it's just an excuse. So if anybody wants to discuss the price of Unga, the cost of living, their constitutional provisions, how to do it in the National Assembly, where the budget making process is done and they are represented in parliament. Where the finance bill on taxation is discussed, they are represented in parliament. So issues, cost of living, the arena of discussion is the National Assembly. So we are only left with one issue, the IBC. Let that discussion go on. And what will be the outcome? The National Assembly and Senate will decide and will be able to make progress. The only thing we have said, there will be no hardship. There will be no hardship. Because <laughs> once beaten, twice shy. The handshake nonsense was the worst experiment for the people of Kenya. Because it came up with a mogrel of a government. You don't know who is government, who is in opposition. So there was nobody to oversight government. And that led to plunder of resources and theft. COVID-19 billionaires, the haste of COVID-19, money meant for sick people was stolen at that time. There was nobody to say anything. Government was borrowing money at 14% from banks owned by those in government. There was nobody to say anything. 6.1 billion was stolen from telecom. There was nobody to say anything. 34 billion shilling was stolen from fuel subsidy. There was nobody to say anything. President William Ruto is saying, a strong opposition is good for any country. We want a strong opposition. We don't want opposition to join government. Let the government remain in place and let a strong opposition keep the government in check. The president... has written a memorandum to parliament recommending that parliament consider to create the office of the leader of official opposition 
so that the person who is today in opposition can criticize government from the dignity of parliament. He doesn't have to go to the streets. He doesn't have to, have to wear a sufria on the head to check government. Let it be done in a dignified manner where he has government resources, he has researchers, he has staffers, he has vehicles, he has funds. Because a strong opposition is good for the country. So I want to assure you that the economy has started showing good signs of recovery. Because what the president has decided, and it's the right thing he has done, is to subsidize production as opposed to subsidize con uh, consumption. When you subsidize consumption, it's not sustainable. But production can be sustained. And what the president has done is that he has given funds to subsidize the cost of fertilizer so that farmers can produce food at a lower cost, increase the yield, and lower down the cost of food. And with the rains that are going on, everything is working out very well. And we are hoping that if these rains continue the way they are, by September, we'll have a bumper harvest, and that will bring down the cost of food, and it will create and sustain food security. So the economy is showing good signs of recovery, and along the way, things will be much better. So our country is good. Everybody is busy. People are busy planting. It's only a few people who are talking about going to the streets. There are few, and that is normal. And uh, also a little noise is not bad, so that we also don't sleep on the job. <laughs> yeah. What we are against is destruction of property. If only they could to go to Jiva Jin Gardens and make noise from morning to evening, and then go home. Come back the following day and continue. That is healthy. That is very healthy. What we are against is destruction of property. What we are against is stopping people from opening their businesses. That is what, as a responsible government, we cannot allow. And that one you must allow us. We a few things here and there to make sure that nobody is destroying property. So I want to thank the High Commissioner here and the staff for the good job they are doing. I want to ask you to continue supporting the embassy. I want to ask you to continue interacting with them as they give you services. And I want to assure you that you'll see improved services once the State Department of Diaspora has been properly anchored. It is still at the establishment stages with teething problems here and there. But the PS is up and running. She's active. She's focused. And I'm sure that within a few months, you are going to start feeding the fruits of that State Department. So me, I want to wish you well. And the way the PS has said, the President has said, you people should go to the embassy and marry. <laughs> Mine as a Kenyan, is only to request you, you marry Kenyans if it's possible. <laughs> Where it is not possible, you can marry foreigners, but also bring them home. You know, don't, don't get married. Don't be married here. Where we come in a foreigner, we let a new bunny. Hata kama ni buwana, it's still okay. You can bring them home. So we encourage you to build strong families. We encourage you to stay close to each other. I want to introduce you to my spouse. You want to talk mama? She can come and say something. And then uh, also she can pray for you. You know when you are in a foreign country, you need prayers. So that she can also pray for you to, to strengthen you, Pastor Dokas. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Are you okay? You are looking like Tunasema Kenya ni sawa. Na wa Kenya muko sawa. And it is okay, and it's going to be okay. As long as you keep your faith and allow yourself to believe and to hope. Because if you see us standing here, we stood against hope. Hopeless situation, and everyone was speaking, and they were saying it is not possible. But I know 
with God all things are and thank you, Your Excellency, for the opportunity, the Abbasana and the peers and our diaspora people, the professionals that have had people who are able to live outside the country and you just look like this is Kenya. I know that there is no greater gift than to have a free spirit that can be able to move from motherland and you come to another country, a foreign land, and you stay there united and maintaining your professionalism, being in unity. And that is the greatest gift that you can have, to be together. Because as I look and I see the beautiful faces and the handsome faces and the hope that is in you, the very fact that you want to stay here and to be served here and you also want to be in our country and support it, it is one of the greatest uh, um, uh, gifts that a country can ever ask. You are a people that we value, you are a people we are looking up to, and we know that as professionals, I know that one time, your brother, Washira, Dr. Washira, was in a country like this. He came as a doctor and he lived there. And we, even his children are also living there. And therefore, we feel with you and we are praying for you. And we know that where there is unity, God commands uh, a blessing. And I know the unity that you are having, unity in coming together in circles that can be able to give you that synergy, that can help you to invest in one another and invest in this country and our country, Kenya. That is something that is going to give Kenya not only a good name, but a people that when we look at you and we see even your families at home and here progressing, that is one of the greatest uh, desire for any country to have. And therefore, I congratulate you for the work that you are doing, the unity that you have, and we'll continue to pray for you. You can give me a good clap. You know, I was just listening when the peer said that uh, love is in the embassy. And I was just thinking, maybe that is an opportunity for me to come and join marriages. <laughs> you know, as a pastor, that is music to my ears. <laughs> I want people to get married. I want uh, balanced families, as you have heard. I'm the champion of the boy child, and I can see very many boy children around here. And we are thinking that uh, as you do that, you pray for us and uh, support the government so that we can be able to fight this drug, uh, alcohol, and uh, substance abuse menace. And because many of you are doctors, when you are home, we are starting rehabilitation of those young men who are in the gutter. We pray that uh, when you come and you, uh, you will volunteer in our rehab center so that we can validate the dreams of our young men and also the young women who have not been fortunate to access the kind of grace God has given us and we can stand and be able to have the opportunity. So we are, the government is trying and is doing very uh, well. Uh, our president and his deputy are working very hard to have that done and therefore God bless you and God honor you. I was told to pray for you, so I will pray for you. Do I pray now? Yeah, so I will pray for you after we finish. That is how it's usually done. Thank you, Your Excellency. So, nafikiri <clears> tumeshukuru <throat> sana. Sana sana, it is true, the way you said, when the president of South Africa came to Nairobi, President William Ruto, also a very tough negotiator, was able to negotiate, it was a three hour negotiation for us, for Kenyans to go to South Africa without visas, and therefore you should uh, be able to enjoy that facility so that you can be able to go to South Africa. We have many Kenyans there, there are many business opportunities and we'll continue also engaging with other countries 
where we have interest. I have found some people here who are marketing Kenyan tea, Ketepa. I was very happy. And uh, we have told our passengers across the country, across the world, that 70% of their, of their time will be taken up in marketing Kenyan products and creating new markets and enlarging the existing markets. So I'm happy that uh, I've seen Kenyan tea here moving. There are a few challenges the person has told me, a few things we need to, to unlock in terms of the trade agreements so that the tea can be cheaper and it can move much faster. I've also found a company that is marketing properties in Kenya. The way I've told you, please invest back home is a good thing so that uh, in future you can be able to reap your investment. So sisi tumeshukuru sana balozi tunafurahi sana tunawapenda sana na for the time we'll stay here tutaonana we'll be here until I think around Tuesday eh, pia tutembee tembee kidogo pia mahasara nimesikia mko hapa tunaweza pata na huko kwa mitaa kwa <laughs> sisi <laughs> sisi ni watu ya juu chini hatuna maringo na kiburi mingi hiyo maneno ni it's that it's not a part of our life. This is what we are So to keep it up, I want to thank you. May God bless you and bless you abundantly. Thank you. Now, please sit down a bit. Thank you, Excellency, for that good speech. You have seen you have been sorted out now. Uh, Your Excellency, it's my pleasure now to invite Rose to give a gift together with the Chairman Kobodia to His Excellency. Please, Rose, wherever you are, come out. <laughs>